Council regular meeting to order Tuesday, September 20th, 12 p.m. Would everybody please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have a roll call, Bev? Nelson? Yes. Knapp? Yes. Rexwinkle? Yes. Good child? Yes. Motion, yes. To, motion to approve the agenda. Yep. Second. Motion made and second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Um, today we're going to move right into, oh, excuse me, I want to welcome everybody to the chamber here that's in the chamber and uh, the gentleman from uh, the, uh, the Mars uh, Daily Sentinel and particularly you people that are watching on television, uh, wherever you may be. Today we have general discussion, and the way we handle our general discussion is the fact that you ask you to step to the podium and state your name and address. Uh, the council cannot make any uh, final decisions uh, during the general discussion uh, on your complaints or your concerns or your compliments, but they're always willing to sit and listen. So at this time, does anybody have any uh, concerns or complaints regarding uh, in the general discussion? Okay. Gene Pluger, 397 17th Street, Southeast. I'd like to thank, you know, thank you, Scott, for calling the other day. You're welcome. Put these wells to rest. <laughs> uh, Amen. Would you mind telling us uh, how we or we put it to rest your well? Not your well, but your neighbors. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes. Um, when we subdivided in uh, 1992, um, that was a farmstead. The farmstead had an existing well next to a barn and that well was refurbished in that approximately 1993 and it was on Mike Anthony's property and four of us uh, at that time did connect. Um, I have not used that well for 15 years as I told uh, Keg. Um, it got disconnected from um, four, three of the four in approximately 1999-2000 so for the last 15, 16 years, I've been using city water. Uh, and the folks he was talking to, they were still of the belief that the refurbished well from way back when we platted was still being used by the same four properties. That is not the case. Okay. Thank you. Thank well, you. The other well. How many would have been against that on the city council? The other well out there that was dug in that new addition, the million dollar addition. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Well, they dug a well out there. Okay. That property owner. Okay. You didn't know that? Uh, no. I didn't know it. I knew it. I don't have a problem with it. He's used it for irrigation. He's not using it for his house. You're going to irrigate several acres. You've got to have a well. You're not going to buy city well, what's water wrong with it? Buy sewer. Well, five years ago, we couldn't dig a well in town. Well, maybe we should change no, that. No, we can. Maybe we should change that. I'm not opposed to wells. You still have I, to. I wouldn't have been opposed to that well, and I'll tell you the truth. I'm not opposed to wells. Mm -hmm. But but whether in a, I had somebody call me and tell me that he was digging a well, and it went in one ear and out the other ear because I really didn't care. It's now, good. I think it actually does go against city ordinance. Well, Scott, but you I'm want to explain that? But I'm guessing. Well, that, but I'm guessing well, let Scott explain it. But I'm guessing that driving 30 miles an hour goes against the law. Because I've kind of been blaming the council. I'm I, guessing I, that, um, you know, <laughs> whatever. No, you, you do have a provision in your code, your ordinance, that deals with private wells. And um, it does prohibit private wells um, unless it's approved. So it prohibits it unless uh, they're asked, asked for permission and are granted permission. 
I have um, kind of some marginal authority as your city administrator in that regard, uh, but the ultimate authority, uh, uh, as is many things that need clarification, goes to the Board of Zoning Adjustment. It does not come to you, the council. It goes to the Board of Zoning Adjustment. In the case of Rick tonight's <laughs> request for a well that first came into my office, and um, I batted around in my own thinking first, and it's because it's three and a half acres, um, I was marginally in favor of <coughs> allowing him to put the well in. However, uh, Jason was code official for uh, whatever it was, 10 to 12 years, and Greg is now. And so I consulted with uh, Jason and Greg, and the three of us really fell that given the circumstances uh, that we would take that to the Board of Zoning Adjustment. So staff did not give uh, their approval. We took it to the Board of Zoning Adjustment and the Board of Zoning Adjustment gave Rick, Rick Knipe permission to drill the well. And that's consistent, 100% consistent with the City Code of Ordinance. They have the authority to do that. Do they have to get a DNR permit? Uh, any and all uh, wells drilled in Iowa have to go through the DNR in order to get a permit. Um, the county sanitarian that's orchestrated by the county uh, and is officed in the courthouse, uh, they are the ones that have to be consulted to get the actual construction permit to put the well in. So yes, Ken. Thank you for clearing that up. Anything else, Kate? Would have been a nice water bill. <laughs> <laughs> now, all them other million dollar homes going up out there, are they gonna dig a well? In them three and a half acres, two, three, four, five acres? They're close to the same procedure. They, they has it been plotted out? They would, it hasn't been platted yet, but once platted and once sold for other lots, they would have the same opportunity to request and then each request would be taken individually. Mm -hmm. We don't have a shortage of water. My only concern would be that, 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 that they would be limited to irrigation. Oh, you know, and not, uh, absolutely. Not house, you know, well, they said one reason they did it is because well water is better than city water. Well, I'll agree with that, 100%. I think that's, a, I, I think that's individual. But if you're going to let everybody start digging wells, you're not going to say it. You can make a statement like that. I think there are wells out there that you could clearly find that are much worse than city water. We just Don't got a lot make of a statement, a statement that well water is better than city water. We have very, very, very good water in this town. Uh, I should explain. There's a lot of iron in that water in the ground here. I also told Keg the reason for the ordinance. Uh, we didn't always have that ordinance, and all of you sitting there uh, fully understand that the city didn't even own the water system until uh, June 1st of uh, 1988, right? And so we started regulating ourselves via ordinance of the water system from 88 to present. Um, and then through the 90s, the DNR came into Lamar's and there was a big statewide push to find all leaking underground fuel storage tanks. Keyword leak, leaking. <coughs> and in the 90s, they found about approximately 28. By the early 2000s, that grew to about 36 uh, in Lamar's Iowa. And they, they're uh, truncated as an acronym, LUST sites. DNR came to the city in the early 2000s and said, you have enough leaking underground storage tanks in Lamar's, Iowa, that it's paramount that you pass an ordinance. So they required it, and the council of the time enacted it uh, in the form that it is today. And the DNR wanted it so that there would be a review process that no well excuse me, no property be allowed to drill a well in a plume of contamination of any kind of petroleum product, whether it's gas, diesel, any kind of hydrocarbon. 
And so they required it so that we would review each and every request for a well such that nobody's drilling a well penetrating the confined uh, layer between our drinking water and the surface where there is floating gas. And believe me, we've got floating gas under Lamar's in numerous locations. And they have not been cleaned up. And so the, that was the reason for the ordinance. It was not, and Clark, I almost appreciate your comments, it was not that we, the city, as a water monopoly, wanted to say nobody could have a well. That was not the case. It was for the protection of our water supply so that people weren't drilling through a contaminated <coughs> plume and allowing that gas to flow down to our water source. Okay? Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, I respect you for bringing that up and clearing that up can, for us. Can I, can I have one more comment along we're on the well subject? Yeah. Because we're going to talk about Crescent Ridge later. Uh, and that's probably what you were referring to as far as acreage was Crescent Ridge. But we had an incident not too long ago where our, our well field dried a well out because it wasn't installed properly. And I would think that with a third well going in in our south well field, that's going to affect Crescent Ridge. I don't know if I, I could recommend to anybody put a well down. If we get a dry year, we're going we're gonna to pump a lot of the water table down. They're in different aquifers, though. Yeah, I know, but we still drew the water table down on a gentleman by the airport, did we not? He, he burned out his equipment because he didn't have the right equipment. But uh, uh, that was the claim. Yeah. Uh, yeah what are but the I got to say, it was unsubstantiated. But, <laughs> but that's, that, that's another reason for it to go through the different processes because at least then we can give them written notice that, that we're not responsible. Uh, that is another reason for review. Absolutely, yeah. I would agree. Okay. Yeah, I think you opened up the gate for a lot of wells being dug. Uh, they can't afford a water bill. Well, I you know, dig a well, I guess. If I was younger, I'd dig one. <laughs> <laughs> but you got anything else, Kate? Yeah, one other is a, right. a jail out there, the county jail. Yeah. Is that debt retired? Yes. Yes. Where did the other penny go now? What's the other penny going that paid the debt off? What are they using that for? Uh, well, it's the same penny, although we took a new vote, so it's a new one cent, um, but that's orchestrated by the council. And what are you using it for? Where? Uh, well, number one, uh, we made a commitment to the Floyd Valley Hospitals, mm -hmm. and so about half of the proceeds for, uh, uh, help me, Rex, six consecutive years, uh, about half of it's going to go for uh, two and a half million going to the hospital assisting with the hospital's project well, I've heard the other cities uh, put a sales tax on to reduce residential property tax yeah you can do that yeah what's uh, if a penny retires a five to six million dollar debt the penny generates a lot of money mm -hmm. well, well, yeah. maybe we ought to put another penny on us keep the tax down in residential. Can I ask a question? When I first got up here, somebody, Rex, possibly you, <laughs> out of compared communities in the area, we are the second to the lowest in property taxes. Is that not correct? When, when we look at the same size cities. As right. I understand, Talk property taxes are going up again next okay, year. Wait a minute. But, uh, are we the, 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 the mill levy is what we're talking about, the mill levy that is the tax rate that you pay. We're in basically, let's say, the, the, the best 10% of cities our side in the state. And that's whether you're looking at city or whether you're looking at combined taxes. We're, yeah. we're the lowest 10%. Well, my brother, so you could they put be. a city pro, uh, tax on a 3% to lower residential taxes, and it's working out real good. Okay. Well, I'm not, I'm not, you know, and, and we right. can look at it, obviously, but the deal is, is that well, if in Iowa. Well, are going to raise taxes again next year, they said. In, in Iowa, I don't know if we can actually put another cent on since we already got a cent on to lower taxes. I think that's a legislative issue. So, 
Well, we'll look at it. We'll look at it. There you go. Okay, so thanks a lot. Other, one other thing, that <laughs> intersection out here, when's that going to? On the Central? Up? Central Avenue? Yeah, Plymouth. What are we thinking? That's all right. It's just going to be plain cement now? After the last parade. Uh, yeah, well, it could be three weeks. Yeah. But I mean, three weeks from yesterday. Three weeks from yesterday. Tear everything out. Not everything, but just the brick and the blacktop. Brick and blacktop come out, and Portland cement concrete reinforced goes in. I don't think they pour that. It's going to be the equivalent of a white top, so four inches. That's it? Well, I mean, the underlying concrete's already eight inches. So I suggest you stamp it with a brick imprint. I mean, you probably won't do it, but it would look nice. Better than just plain cement. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Gene. Appreciate it. And Scott, thank you for the uh, uh, comments that you made regarding the wells and the reasons and the why. I think you're probably the only guy in town that could recite that, you know? <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, moving on. We got a lot of hate to cut here. Uh, the next move is uh, thumbs up award. Is there any other citizens out there that's got any <coughs> general discussion? Excuse me, I didn't mean to leave anybody out. If not, John? Nothing. Uh, Clark? Steve? Uh, chamber dinner theater this past mm -hmm. Saturday or a couple weeks ago. Excellent. First one I've ever attended, so, and, but I was highly entertained and, and uh, a wonderful event. Got your money's worth? I did get my money's worth. Yep. <laughs> the other one was uh, uh, the school's LEAP program and their menu masters that they just had Saturday night. Well attended and uh, a whole lot of fun. Okay. Rex? I'll pass. I'll okay. pass. Thank you. Okay. The next one is the consent items. All items listed under the consent agenda will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on those items unless a request is made prior to the time the council votes on the motion. Uh, today we have seven of them. Approve the September 6, 2016 regular meeting minutes. Number two is a list of bills for the period ending 9-16-16. <coughs> Number three is a monthly financial statement for August 2016. Number four is a renewal of the liquor license beer wine permit for the KC's and Cargo Express 2. Number five is the urban re revitalization tax exemption request. Number six is the annual street finance report. And number seven is the construction and fire code regulations. Before there's any action on this, I want to call the attention to the council that on page three, uh, under the uh, bills to be paid, there was a typographical error. It had to do with the uh, uh, Mid-American uh, Energy Bill to the theater, and it said the golf course. It should be the theater's bill and not the golf course department. So I just wanted to call everybody's attention to that. Is there anybody have any questions in regarding pulling any of these before we vote? Uh, just a quick question. Building codes and construction, this is just telling us that they're coming up for review, correct? Uh, no, the state adopted the new versions, okay. so we're just following suit and adopting okay. the same thing. Any other questions? Motion to approve consent items one through seven with uh, resolution number 1635. Okay, is there a second? Second. Motion made to approve uh, the consent items uh, number one through seven with the uh, motion to be made on the, or the resolution uh, on number seven, was that? Yeah. Six. Six, I'm sorry, six. So could we have a roll call on that, Bev? Matt? Yep. Rexwinkle? Yes. Goodchild? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Whip. Yes. Okay, thank you. Moving on to the action items. Uh, the first one on is the uh, uh, Main Street uh, Challenge Grant. Uh, attached is a letter from the Main Street manager, uh, Mary Reynolds. Requesting a financial support for the 2016 State of the Main Iowa Main Street Challenge grant application in the amount of $25,000 for the Clausens. Uh, and of course, Mary will be present here to uh, share this with us. Uh, before you do, Mary, I do want to recognize Robin, who is with us today in the council. Uh, who is it? I was uh, the Main Street. Uh, Robin Bostrom is from the State of Iowa Main Street program, and she's here for our yearly visitation today. So uh, cool. the timing was right, and welcome, Robin, Thank you. to Lamar's. Thank you. We, we might again. need your help down the road. That's the reason we always. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here for. 
Well, I come today before you representing the Chamber of Commerce Main Street program, and we are applying for another challenge grant this year. We did not do that last year. Just to refresh your memory, we applied for a challenge grant a couple years ago. It was for the American Legion, and I think you've all seen the dramatic changes. It was a $60,000 project. We got a $30,000 State of Iowa Challenge Grant. Uh, the city gave us $15,000 through the facade program at that time that's run through Main Street, and then the Legion put in fifteen. We just finished, and we'll have a uh, ribbon cutting soon, the Beauty College. You also helped us with that. That was a $150,000 project. The state of Iowa awarded us $75,000, and um, the council um, gave us $37,500, and then um, it has gone a little over. So Todd, Lan uh, Todd Anderson and his wife Stacy, um, it's about $43,000 for their share. So today we come before you I, uh, representing uh, Terry and Lori Clausen, who are here building owners and we've been talking to them for quite some time about second floor housing and they have interest in making two lofts on their second floor. These will be high-end lofts renting in the range of eight hundred to a thousand dollars and we had Tim Reinders from the state of Iowa Main Street office come up and assess the property and uh, make us a design and um, contractor would be Matt Ryder. Um, I do want to let you know that um, the project probably will not go forward if we don't get the challenge grant. So your gift, if you so choose to make it again, would be contingent on us getting the challenge grant. That will be a $150,000 project <coughs> at this time. And we will be applying for the full $75,000 in the challenge grant. And we would like to see if the council would come in on that project and support us with a $25,000 gift and then the remainder of the 50000 would come from Mr. and Mrs. Clausen. The grant goes in in a week. Um, Rich Sitlow, Steve Collins, and myself are writing the grant for the state. And we are appreciative that Robin is here today. This afternoon we will be spending time going over our application with her and um, perfecting it. So we would like to see if the council would again come in on this third challenge grant that we're going through for going through the process of for Main Street. Any questions for Mary? How is that tax? Is that tax commercial or residential? No, it will be residential on the second floor. Okay. Bottom would be commercial, top would be uh, assessed at residential. Okay. I make a motion approving the Main Street Challenge grant application with the City of Lamar's funding $25,000 of the project for an eco from economic development fund dependent on the approval of the 2016 State of Iowa Main Street Challenge grant application. So this is contingent Correct. Mm -hmm. on the getting the state award. Yes. The, state. the project would not be a and go the without it. Would come off, it would be a, a city and Kloss and team. Uh, yeah, that other 50 50 match, correct. 50 match. Mm -hmm. Second. Motion to remain second. Approving Main Street challenge grant application with the city of Lamar's funding $25,000 for the project from the Economic Development Fund based on the 2016 grant, is that right? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, could we have a, a motion on that? Motion. Or excuse me, I'm sorry. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion. Opposed. Excuse me, I was four to one. Did you get that? Uh, Clark? I'm opposed. Yeah, okay. Well, since we got the state here, we should have us weigh in on this thing, right? because she's going to run this down and get the challenge grant approved. Well, we hope it has some impact, well, so. We'll put the onus on her since she's yeah. sitting in the audience, you know. <laughs> we don't do this with just a little I kind of, of I kind of missed what the vote was. 4-1. 4-1. 4-1. 4-4. 4-4, one down. Okay, well, I thank you very much for the support of... Yeah of the Main Street efforts and for the challenge grants. So thank you very much, and Robin, Councilman. you got any comments about Lamar's? Uh, we hope it will score well. That's my comment. Yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, we're happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. As Mary said, I'm Robin Bostrom. I am one of two business specialists on our team at um, Main Street, Iowa. And so we do come in annually um, just to visit with our communities and to see if there's anything that we can do to further assist the efforts that you guys have going. So I've had a wonderful morning here um, seeing all that you've done. Uh, I got to just tour the Alley Art Project and 
Um, I'm just so impressed. So again, um, thank you very much for hosting and thank you for your support of the Main Street program. Um, here in the community, they're doing really great things. And I was sharing with the group this morning that um, I do send a lot of people, um, give them Mary's phone number to call and talk to them because you guys have done some really cool things with public art. And so we do use you as a resource for others across the state who are looking to do things and to do them well. So um, thank you again for your support. And it's uh, my pleasure to be here today. Thank you. We, uh, you think we're pointing in the right direction, huh, Robin? I think you're headed in the right direction, okay, yes. Good. So um, it right. takes a lot of dedicated people, and you seem to have that happening. We just assume so. you're going to take care of that grant for us. And I'll do my <laughs> best to. Uh, <laughs> I, I do get to score them, so I'll, I'll try to see what kind of uh, okay. I can influence my buddies to see Thanks what we can do. Thanks for come back and see us. You bet. Thank you. Uh, okay, the next one is the, um, uh, where am I at here? 2016 Crescent Ridge Underground. Uh, in, uh, infrastructure project. At the August 16th, uh, 2016 meeting, the City Council set this as a date and time to consider the bids received for the 2016 Crescent Ridge Underground Infrastructure Project, i.e. sanitary sewer, water mains, and storm sewers. The bids will be received and opened on September 20th, 2016 at 10 a.m. and available at the meeting. We did open the bids this morning and uh, we are going to talk about those. The recommendation from the staff is a proposed schedule is the bid letting on September 20th at 10 a.m. which happened uh, today. Consider the award September 20th, 2016 at 12 p.m. The, the beginning construction date is set for September 30th and the end construction date is December 15th, 2016. The financial impact will be paid for by the following. Special assessments to the south side property owners, the sanitary sewer funds, the water funds, and the storm sewer funds. Project will allow housing development on six LBIC lots. Uh, any questions or regard to that? Uh, should we share the bid, Scott? You want to? Yes, I would ask Pat, Pat, Pat uh, please. To yeah. share that. Please. We did receive uh, four bids this morning, um, and uh, I've handed out a, a tabulation of the bids. Uh, there was a couple math errors uh, in, in those bids. Uh, I'll just read through these quick. Uh, Halstein excavating. Uh, Edgerton, Minnesota was the low bid as read at $276,000. Uh, $1.50. There was a, a slight math there on that bid, uh, which brought the corrected amount to $276,000.85. Uh, we did bid this project with an alternate for uh, HDPE or plastic storm sewer line. Um, and you can see the total bid with the alternates of being $275,608.48. Um, roughly $400 less to go with the plastic. Um, that's total cost, $400 less. Um, Vanderpool excavating was the second low, $325,763.90. Uh, uh, with the alternates, $326,723.50. Uh, uh, H&W contracting was third bid of 388 uh, three one thirty one twenty five with the alternates uh, of three ninety one six sixty eight point two five. Um, the last bid was RP Constructors North Sioux City. Uh, their bid as read was four hundred eighty thousand nine hundred forty nine dollars and ninety cents. Um, on that bid, there was a, a math there. They added the alternates total of the alternates into the base bid. So as you can see, the, the corrected bid amount is $396,770.90, and uh, the total bid with alternates of $400,498.90. I did have a, a, a chance after the bid opening to visit with uh, Holstein Excavating. Uh, they're a contractor that I've never worked with before, and I don't believe the city has worked with them before either. But uh, talking with Dave Holstein, the owner, um, they've been in business since 92. Um, he gave me a lowdown of what equipment they have. Uh, and uh, they have more than enough uh, uh, equipment to, to be able to handle this job. Um, they've done 
some work in, in northwest Iowa with uh, uh, the city of Sioux Center, Hull, Storm Lake, Milford. I did uh, touch base with one of the engineers on the projects that they worked on, and, and they says that uh, um, they do a, a, you know a satisfactory job. Uh, his feel on it that is you know. They're based out of southwest Minnesota. In the last number of years, they've been trying to expand their business into northwest Iowa. Uh, and that's probably why we haven't seen them bid on projects before. Um, but uh, I would recommend awarding the contract to Holstein Excavating. I feel comfortable visiting with them and, and the other engineers that they'll be able to, to do this job. Any, Any questions? questions? Pat, uh, which one of the amount, the 276 or the 275? The corrected amount is the, well, that's, uh, let's back up one second. There was, uh, the base bid was with the concrete pipe uh, for the storm sewer. That's the $276,000.85. The ultimate bid is with the plastic or HDPE um, storm sewer pipe, and that's the 275-608-48. I would recommend staying with the base bid of the concrete pipe for the the four hundred dollar difference i think the the concrete pipe has a, a proven history um so so you're recommending the 276 oh correct right 50. yep okay scott do, scott do we have any plastic storm sewer pipe in town anywhere oh yeah we do have one. yeah we've been using it since uh the mid 90s and in the first uh, decade or so, Thanks, uh, we used it only for that which was outside of paving. Uh, but the HPE uh, industry, if you will, has got themselves now incorporated in the DOT spec in some areas and in the SUDA spec that we use. And uh, so we do treat that as uh, an acceptable material. Uh, I, however, in this particular case, would go along with Pat's recommendation for, for a only $400 difference, I'd stay with the base bid. Any other questions? Just wondering if I'd be allowed to comment uh, on the auction briefly. Sure. Um, if you don't mind me saying, uh, my name is Clint and I'm an employee at Advanced Drainage Systems. We are a pipe manufacturer that is the alternate on this job. I just want to make uh, two comments about the alternate, if I may. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak, City Council and citizens of Lamar's. Uh, I, I just want to say, one, the alternate process is special. Uh, and what I mean by that is, uh, in general, uh, the public sector has a duty to investigate the alternate bid process. I think upon investigation that you would find, if there was not an alternate allowed on this project, you would find that there would have been one bidder for pipe materials on the storm sewer. So the, I, I, I commend uh, the City of Lamar's for allowing an alternate, and it's, it's a good service to the city. It has brought uh, installation costs down as the one bidder then had to compete in order to be competitive on the project. Um, I also wanted to comment, uh, Scott spoke to the city having a track record with the alternate material and uh, the uh, awarded, uh, proposed uh, awarded contractor, uh, Pat mentioned that they did work recently in Storm Lake and they installed the alternate product on a street project, street crossings uh, on Erie right in front of City Hall. So uh, the second comment that I have to make then is if the question is, do we accept the alternate price? Uh, the way I view it is uh, the contractor is willing to give a savings. And I, I would ask the council to consider taking the savings that, that they're giving on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any further questions on them? If not, I'd, enter, I'd uh, entertain a bid or a motion. Any further questions? I'd entertain a motion to accept the bids. I think we're trying to figure out if 400 bucks is worth it or not. Oh, okay. I think, I think the council's a little stumped right now. I mean, we have always gone with the regular the reason we've done alternates, uh, just like the gentleman said, but we've done it before on projects, is to make it be competitive. 
and I think the alternate made it competitive for the concrete. And um, I would prefer to go with the concrete, I guess. I guess I'm with you, Rex. I would go with it because it's Scott's yeah. recommendation in this yeah. case also. And it's 16-36, is that right? Yes. Motion adopting 1636 award in 2016 Crescent Ridge Underground Infrastructure to Holstein Excavate in Edgertown, Minnesota in the amount of 276000.85. Is there a second? So moved. Motion made and second adopting resolution number 16-36 awarding the 2016 Crescent Ridge Underground Infrastructure Project to Holstein Excavating Incorporated of Edgerton, Minnesota in the amount of two seven six two hundred seventy six thousand six hundred and dollars no, 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 no. zero 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 point eight five. Oh that's right. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Two hundred and seventy six thousand point eighty five. Uh, we have a roll call on that bill. Wick? Yes. Rex Winkle? Yes. Good child? No. Yeah? Yes. No, sir. Yes. Motion carried. Yeah, thank I'd, you. I'd like to compliment the young man for coming in and talking yes. about his product. Yes. We don't often get that here. We the appreciate council. that. I want you to know that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and and it wasn't wasted either because honestly, that's good information. Um, and we do quite a few projects, so I think it's it's definitely it was not wasted time on your part. Well, that's for sure. And we're always willing to learn. Okay, moving on to uh, discussion. John? Nothing. Uh, Clark? Yeah, I just, I, I do want to make a comment okay. because I want to uh, just kind of clarify this whole apartment thing and why, why I'm not opposed to helping out, but this city stepped forward with a quarter of a million dollars two years ago to help 20 businesses downtown improve their property. I'm not opposed to uptown housing. But if anybody could get a duplex or two apartments that are going to rent for 800 bucks to $1,000 a month each for $75,000, that is one heck of a return. And I think there's a point where we definitely show we are willing to help our downtown businesses, our businesses, our industries, and our citizens. But I think there's got to be a point where we say you guys have to help yourselves a little bit. And the other thing that I wanted to point out, and I don't want to sound like a crybaby, but the one thing that kind of bothers me is out of those 20 businesses that we helped with a quarter of a million bucks two years ago, I don't think one of them's come in here and said thank you. And that was a lot of money. And I don't think of one of them that I know of has said thank you. So it, it is kind of bothersome to me. And I hope Terry doesn't take it as personal, because it's not personal. I would have said no to my best friend. So that's my reason for it, guys. I just okay. wanted to just share Thank, that. Thanks, Clark. Anything else? Nope. Steve? No. Nope. Rex? I've had, I've had a few personally say thank you to me as a councilman. I guess maybe I haven't shared it with everybody, but I have had a few say thank you. So. Okay. Um, that's all. Well, no, the other thing is, is they were going to close 12th Street, because Railroad right Crossing Arms were going in. They announced it on the Ray Didio. I heard it. Nothing happened. Tell me what's going on. That. <laughs> so, 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 um, so we got a problem? <laughs> yep. Uh, approximately a $12,000 problem. Um, the city's traffic pole, traffic signal pole, yep. is... Um, too close and skewed with what will be the proper alignment for the new safety gate. Okay. Uh, such that when the safety gate is going up and down, the tip of it would hit our cantilevered arm. Okay. And obviously that can't happen. The railroad. Um, is, is uh, pretty heavily regulated, as you can imagine. And so they, they must put in a safety gate <coughs> and its pole supporting it um, exactly where it's supposed to be, right? 
You know, they can't just turn it to get it out of the way of our existing cantilever. Because the road doesn't go quite straight either, you know, it, it kind of curves to that exit. Right. So you can't see this, but we've got to move the, the uh, base of our traffic signal pole uh, slightly to the, I'm going to call it west or towards the highway. And then, and more particularly, uh, we've got to make sure that the bolt pattern that the metal uh, connects to the concrete, that it connects in the right alignment and, and again, more specifically, parallel to the railroad tracks. Forget the highway. It's got to be parallel to the railroad tracks so that when the, ar the safety arm comes down, it's coming down and parallel to our signal pole and not on a skew. And we can do that? There's enough room to do that? Uh, well, just. And it takes okay. some electric uh, work. It takes, um, in fact, rerouting that uh, first temporarily and then permanently. And it takes a extremely um, substantial base, three foot diameter by 13 feet deep. Oh, pure kind. 13 feet deep? Pure concrete and reinforced. There's a lot of cantilever weight on it. Oh, yeah. Lordy. Yeah. Lordy. Lordy. It, the problem it, is if you've got to move it just a short distance, that's harder than if you had to move it 10 yards, right? Uh, that's pretty accurate. Because because now you've got a big hole. Well, there's an, inter, there's an interface between the two. Yeah. And uh, you can't see underground, so we're hopeful that when we drill the three-foot diameter that we don't uh, interface with the base of the existing. How much closer do we have, how much do we have to move it? 12 feet. Uh, do I know that figure? I don't know that figure. I mean if it's Just like, a few feet. A few feet. So I mean there's there's no way we could come up with some sort of a huge plate we could bolt to the existing existing footing and there's a lot of weight hanging out there. Uh, we use general traffic control from uh, uh, Spencer and have for three decades that I know of. Uh, they don't want to take that liability. Okay. The, the uh, contractor that um, General Traffic uses for the mounting of such things is uh, Nystrom Electric out of Sioux City. And Nystrom, quite frankly, is uh, I think the only vendor that works for the entire city of Sioux City on all their traffic lights. And they don't want to take the responsibility. So we either do it the way the standards are set, or or, or we punt. We get rid of all the traffic lights of that here's And we're talking what kind of cost? Uh ten to twelve thousand dollars. So I said yes to it. Now you've been informed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't say no. We have you to, no choice. That's my fault. I mean, you know, it doesn't, you know. You we said yes to the 400 and some thousand dollar project, uh, that being the railroad arms, and we've got to pick up, uh, whatever, 5% yeah. of that, I think. Yeah. And nobody saw this until they showed up the day they were going to put them on. Huh? <laughs> you know, that can, that, I, I think mean, I'm just, thank I'm you for asking. bringing that up, the, the, uh, the specialists from the railroad came up out of Omaha yeah. and on a very cold winter day we all stood on that intersection myself included right. and nobody but nobody brought that up as a concern and I was I'm surprised about that I, I didn't either I'll admit yeah I but we got all the way to the street closure day yeah. hour whatever you want to call it right yeah well, and I, I like was Electrically, Scott, can we just splice in from the old uh, base luck, to the new? As luck would have it, there is a pull manhole uh, not very far away, and so we're going to go to that point. Okay. That's your question, right? Okay, more than I wanted. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> nope. Good. There's always a reason for this stuff. I just thought we should get informed. <laughs> Communication. Well, my, my comment would be, and I'm, su I'm sure Scott's going to update this, but uh, the lack of the uh, communication on the project on Business Highway 75 is really stretched out. So I'll let you comment, but everybody, because I'm on the council, comes to me and says, what are they doing now? And I said, damn it, if I know, 
you can't get any information out there on the highway. We're to the point of yelling back and forth at each other, so we've, uh, we've blew yeah, that. The project's been a very uh, extreme frustration, uh, to say it mildly. Um, progress has been slow, um, in all fairness to the contractor. Um, our, and we've, this is, I'm echoing myself from past, um, our rights of way are getting filled up. There are lots of, you can't see it, because it's all underground, but it, it's getting filled up. There's so many utilities. And so that has lent to the delays. And yes, they've hit different things. Uh, they've had to avoid a whole host of items. Uh, and you, you know what they all are. It's all the various utilities and underground stuff. Um, when you're doing a retrofit, uh, like we are, we're putting in a new water main where an old water main exists, and then we're having to energize that, and once energized, then we can hook in the homes and the businesses, right? So there's delays there, and the reason for delays, we've got to take any more, uh, AWWA requires it, but so does EPA and DNR. We have to take two tests when new, when new mains are in to make sure that the uh, fecal chloroform bacteria count is knocked out. So we take two tests, we gotta send them to a lab to test it. It takes time to send it there and get the results back. We have to pressure test it, and that takes some time. Once it's fully in the ground, fully tested, then and only then we can then tap businesses and residents to it. That's what they're doing now. So although the pipe has been in the ground and at a previous meeting I said, you know, it's in the ground, now maybe things can move forward. Uh, they still need to connect all those homes and businesses, both sides of the street. So today you run down there and you're gonna find potholes on the east side. The main's on the west side, and we're born across. And then lo and behold, uh, Mid-America has a gas line uh, that isn't where they thought it was, and so the HD underground has snagged it. And there was a leak. And so the highway was kind of shut down there yesterday for a time because there was a leak of gas, natural gas. Um, and then now there's a, a, a vertical <coughs> conflict between where we want to put the service lines and where the gas line's at and where the sewer line's at. They're all about at the same elevation. And that's a bad deal because it's down at an elevation where we want to put the water line. So we're, we're working through that right now. There's going to be further complications on Highway 75 in the short term uh, probably starting today, we're going to pull the west barricades to the west because the east barricades have to block off um, the outer lane plus part of the inner lane, northbound. And the reason for that is they're going to core drill that pavement and they're going to actually verify the Mid-American Energy gas line. Uh, location in the XY uh, coordinate as well as the vertical depth so that we don't hit it again. Um, I think a total of 17 service lines have to be bored. So it's not just one, it's 17 of them that we're messing with. Um, so the main is in, it has all the testing done, pressure testing, chloroform testing, <coughs> it's ready to go, it's good potable water inside that main, but until we get this, now this gas line thing worked out, uh, and we start boring again, um, it's going to be a little bit more of a delay. Um, I think it's a that good thing we're not paving this year. You see, it's a silver lining in all of it. You know? and there, yeah, I think there was, uh, the fact we got no bids was probably a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, we'd be paying that guy because he couldn't coming. do what he That's wanted right. to do. Yeah. I think the two borings on the highway looking for the gas, I think those were completed this morning. Yes, and I think the uh, potholing in the middle of that uh, 
laying is going to occur yet this afternoon. Yeah. That's your question, Ken? Okay, so we, um, so we got to well, so that being said, Ken did call me, and I haven't called you back because I haven't got it quite figured out yet uh, exactly where they're going to be born on the west side, and if it's not going to be in front of some of those properties, we will get a cedar down there and do the fine grading and seeding in front of those properties that we can. We, the problem is we can't do them all. Uh, in DOT spec and in uh, SUDA spec, we can seed up through September 30. Now, if you want us to gamble, we can seed beyond that. It all depends on the weather. Uh, so Ken's request was, is there any way that is some of it done to the point where we can get it fine graded and seeded so they're not sitting in mud all, all winter long. I think it's a reasonable request and I'm going to try to accomplish that to the greatest extent possible. Well, my, my other concern is, is where they're putting a new curb in in front of our place and on down the line. It's not a full curb, it just, it's going to be there for the new paving. And my concern is the first time they put a wing plow down, that, that mud is just going to fly everywhere. So we're going to have to have some real attention paid to how, the, how they plow snow down there, or they'll take my windows right out. I don't. I have no. I have no anticipation of it. those areas where the new curb is going in, so to speak. I, I think it'd be a waste of money even seeding that because you're going to have to do it next spring anyhow after you put the white topping in. Uh, well, that's true too. If yeah. We, you, well, once we, we do that project, there's going to be some back of curb disturbance. Sure, there'll be two or three foot there. That you would have to do anyhow. So, but the neighbors to the south of me, where they're not doing any more boring, I, and I think that one goes over to the American Bank was probably the only water that's going to go from there. At least those people could get seated and finished up so that they wouldn't have the mess all next year. Yeah, Am Insurance has got a big pothole in the <coughs> front yard, so I haven't checked that out yet. They must be getting a new service right now. Yeah. So that, that should be done in time to get that seated, I would think, down there. But the rest of it, there's no curb, there's no, I don't see any sense of seating it to let it go until the paving is done. Yeah. Okay, so we might as well go back and you tell us about what's going on at the pit since that's the only one left that people are asking about. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the uh, pit uh, has been re-sparked. Uh, for those of you that live out north, you probably noticed it. Um, so the old uh, Leo Grecken pit, uh, we, we've uh, negotiated through Walker Excavating uh, to uh, get granular material out of that pit. It's nice and close, short haul. And so that is going to be the source of filling in the balance of the South Pond. It got started yesterday. It will continue until it's completed now. And uh, we got a combination of uh, Walker excavating and uh, Kellen excavating doing the work. How much you figure it's going to take? Uh, are you talking dollar wise? No, no. Uh, no, I'm talking about tons. Oh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have a good handle on that, Clark, because we haven't depth checked on the south side. Okay. Um, I, uh, roughly, I've been telling people that I think we're about 80% filled uh, because of the angle of repose underwater is about a three to one. And given that and the size of what's open right now, um, I really think it, it looks broader than it is. Now, that being said, What's open water in the South Pit is in the location that was the deepest on the south side. And the deepest on the south side was 17 feet. Uh, but given an angle of repose uh, that I quoted, three to one, uh, I would guess that the deepest today is less than 17 feet. It has to be. Where do you hope to be at the end of the year? Just grade it out and take over in the spring? I want to be completely dry, yep, yeah, right. and uh, possibly uh, bust into getting some utilities in there, okay. uh, electric and sewer okay. and water. I'm glad you're using the fill sand because all that will have the same settling effect rather than if you put another material in there. I think pay off in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to have a little damage to our wreck trail, but we knew that going in even yeah. even when we had the dredgers there. So, and part of that's going to get relocated slightly, 
uh, when it's all said and done. So I think uh, everything looks like it's a good green light to go forward. That's, 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 that's all the questions that the people got out in the world. I know. I know. We're, we're, uh, can't make communication. We had a fair amount of uh, asphalt work by uh, Knife River, and now I've got a proposal from um, Barkley Asphalt to do about nine other areas. And so, Clark, you gave me an email about six, and um, we concur with you that, that, that's, that it's, there's some rough spots there. So between 6th and Central and 6th Southwest, uh, he was talking about 6th Southeast, um, Business 75, I think two or three of you had asked, if, uh, since we're not doing the white topping, if we shouldn't do something a little more substantial than cold mix. And so we mess with uh, Business 75. A couple of you met, uh, asked about Central <coughs> Avenue. I think, John, you did at one point, and uh, we agree with th those comments. So we've got some uh, partial depth uh, filling of Central, Business 75. We need a taper on some of that new curb and gutter because of Vanderpool, and so the, the Barclays would do that taper. Um, there's a little bit out there on mahogany to get rid of that one settlement. About three of you go over that settlement every day in front of Ted Jackson's house. I'm not house. worried about the settlement. Is the stuff coming off the side dump trucks down? <laughs> well, we'll get the streets. <laughs> okay, I just just <laughs> just slow uh, down a little, Rex. <laughs> I don't go 15 like you. <laughs> Dick never knows. I knew that was coming. There's a little bit more to do out of that. There's a little bit more to do out that golf parking, and then also that park building. We're going to do some paving on the inside of that building. So, anyway, I wanted you to know that we're going to have Barkley Asphalt in town in about three weeks. Scott, I don't know they were. I've had a couple of people share with me, and, I, and I, I went out and looked at it. You might want to check 9th Street, um, Ninth? southwest, just on the other side of the boulevard, the next street going west. It just as long as they're in town, I mean, you might want to check it out. I, I've had several people ask me about it. Now that you mentioned it, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Every it's one of the transverse joints is a bump. Yeah. And I don't know if you covered it, Scott, but there's, by Godfather's Pizza, there's kind of a, uh, along the, between lanes, it's kind of a rough, maybe you saw some of that, I'll have to patch it into. Uh, that's where Business 75, where there's yeah. a, okay. uh, that's, that's I can't even count seam. them. It's a seam. <laughs> There's a number of locations on Business 75 from Highway 3 all the way down to the end that we're going to be messing with. Okay. Yeah. And right in front of Godfather's is one of those. Right. Yeah. Anything else, Scott? Uh, yeah, um, some unfortunate news that I always hate uh, reporting. We applied for a grant uh, on REAP, and um, they preliminarily, I, I wasn't going to be here today, quite frankly, because I was going to be in front of the selection committee down in Des Moines. However, uh, the selection committee doing their due diligence and to keep people's uh, inconvenience to a minimum, they did a preliminary scoring of all of the applications that went in. And there's um, something like 15 applications on small city, 15 on medium city, and a lesser number on uh, large city. We fit in the medium city, which is, they call it between 2,000 and 25,000. So that's where we fit. And unfortunately, we're below the so-called red line, and therefore we're not going to get funded. That grant application was prepared by Simcoe, and we signed it, and we gave them all the information. Um, how, and it was for 100000 to be utilized at the municipal park shelter, and we did not get it. Uh, the final thing is, um, uh, Ken, John, and Dick has seen this, but I wanted to just kind of brief the rest of you council. We are um, uh, going to consider a new zoning ordinance for the airport, and I wanted you to be uh, knowledgeable of that. If you want your own personal copy to read through it, uh, we can get that to you. I'll have Christy get it out to you. Uh, so if you want to put your request in, copies are at City Hall. Uh, Bolton and Mink had a hand in this, and so did Simcoe. Uh, but now at this point, uh, Jason, uh, Greg, and I will have to bring it through the PNZ first, and you to ratify it. Or we could email it to, those, to the other council people also. 
if you'd prefer to that'd have be, it by that'd email, be fine. Yeah. just email. Save, save the tree. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's totally fine. Uh, the final thing is you um, said that was the final. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> did I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're keeping up on it. I got him. Good catch. The new final. The next final. The, <laughs> the next final thing is uh, before we can demo the uh, former CSS, CSS building. Um, since it's uh, this version is going to be a complete demo, uh, we've got to get um, a clearance on asbestos. And so I went ahead and authorized for the combination of ESA out of North Sioux, working with Terracon out of Omaha, to get that verified for the city of Lawrence. Are you seeing if there's asbestos in there, or you know there is, and how we've got to deal with it? The first. Okay, to see if there is. I do not think there is any, but that's, I'm not that's an pretty expert. Naked in there. I mean, that's pretty bare in there. That's yes. Okay. On a remodel, you don't have to do it, believe it or not. On a complete demo, you better have it certified that it's been looked at and verified that there's no asbestos. Sure. Absolutely. So I went ahead and approved it, but I wanted you to be aware of it. Anything else? Anything for Scott? So, so how long does that take to verify? Um, I mean, John it just Scott. looks ugly right now. It's just, you know, so really, it really <laughs> looks ugly. I mean, we got Kenny's place that's all tore up like a war zone. Then we go down the street and we got a blown out building. <laughs> I agree with all of that. So I was pulling, uh, trying to pull the trigger <coughs> right. on taking the building down as soon as the ink got dry on the right. uh, transfer papers. Yeah. Uh, which isn't quite uh, there yet. No, but as soon as that was dry, I was going to pull the trigger. So is and, that a 30 day uh, process to get asbestos? They're going to come in Monday, and John with Terracon promises that by Tuesday we would know the results. Okay. okay. That's, That's next fast. Monday, next Tuesday. You work faster than attorneys. Have you been successful? <laughs> have you been successful? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I couldn't pass that up, Joe. Have you been successful with Dell on taking that down? I mean, pretty favorably. Is that going to take that down? Or? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, what I got from him is uh, one of two bids that I can share with you. And um, 10000 if he keeps all of the recyclables, mm -hmm. which in this particular case, with the exception of the roof membrane, everything else is recyclable. So we can get by with 10 if we want to. The second bid is the city would... Uh, Give, be given credit as all of our broken concrete goes out to Dell anyway. Mm -hmm. And if we were given credit for the tonnage of that concrete, that would be taken down to crushed aggregate. And then we can use that on our projects. Right. And then the steel beams, truss beams that are in there, um, I, I think we should salvage those for purposes of creating uh, rec trail bridges right. out of them. Right. And, and uh, there's four, and so guess what? That would make two, two bridges. bridges. Yeah. And uh, so uh, to keep the concrete and keep the steel, uh, then our price tag would be 15000 And so I, I personally thought for a spread of 5000 we should do that. I think the value in the aggregate alone, forget the steel, the aggregate alone would substantiate the difference. Sure. Okay. Any other Could questions? Yeah. Yeah. The dollars yeah, wise. Good questions. Well, in within. So that was my third final. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. No, nothing. <laughs> Can I go back one thing? Oh, sure. wait. I, a, a thumbs up to our fire and ambulance and police and all of the services last Friday night. Yeah. What could have been a messy, messy, much, much messier scene turned out to be only a messy scene and a lot of work for you guys, but thumbs up for how it was handled. Well done. I agree. Thanks a lot, Steve, for bringing that up. And Pat, thanks for your help on this, uh, these bidding processes and everything. Uh, we're not going to move forward. So did those people think they're going to get started right now? Holstein? They're going to have to be ordered. I understand. I just didn't know if they said this week, next week, well, end of the month. 
He did. If we can tell Jesse Anthony, he's going to have one. That's, that, that's, yeah. that's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. He, he, he watches on YouTube, but it's not up right away. Out there. How, how far up is the house? It's up. Yeah. It's so up. We need water. It's up. <laughs> It's, um, yeah, Spotify's being utilized. But. Motion to adjourn. Motion made and second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. aye.